Hi everyone, my name's Kent, and I thought I'd uh, share with you what I've learned in 35 years as a personal fitness trainer, working in the fitness industry for 35 years, health spas, my own studios. Some people might find it enlightening. Um, all my references are down below. I didn't want to bore you with all the stuff I've done. But uh, first off, I just want to say that I love to exercise. I got into this industry because I like to exercise. It makes me feel good. It helps rehab injuries. It helps prevent injuries. I like the way I look. I like the way I can participate in sports, hike, bike, all the things I enjoy to do. So fitness is very important. But what I've learned after 35 years of training people and training myself is that exercise is important for all those reasons, but the most important thing is what you put in your mouth. And of course, we hear all kinds of different ways of to eat from all the billions of books that are out there. But I'm here to tell you what works. And I fought it. I didn't want to do what I'm about to tell you because I was raised a certain way. I was raised in the meat-eating society. Meat, uh, my mom showed her love through her food. And I love my, my burgers and steaks and chicken and ice cream and cheese and all the things that everybody loves. Uh, so it wasn't about not liking what I was eating. It was about doing the right thing for my body and for the planet and for all other creatures. So I think you get the picture. What I've learned is that beyond a shadow of a doubt, humans are designed to eat plants and plants only. We're plant eaters. We're vegans, whatever you want to call it. We should be eating low fat, whole food, plant only foods, 100%, you know, no moderation. And this day and age, there's so much variety. When I started this out 20 years ago, I've been a trainer for 35 years. I've been eating nothing but plants for the past 20 years, ever since I had my first major physical at 40 years old, where my cholesterol was almost 300, my blood pressure was high. I was eating basically a paleo type diet, but and lean as lean could be, but I wasn't healthy because I was putting in the wrong foods for the design of the human body. So I switched and I, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have all the guidance that I'm trying to help you with right now, that it's out there right now. But I switched and I gave it an experiment. I had an open-mindedness to try something different, even though I liked those foods. So for about two months, I went 100% plant only. And basically oatmeals for breakfast, bean and rice burritos for lunch, a big salad and a potato, sweet potato, regular potato for dinner. Um, ate chocolate, dark chocolate, ate nuts. You know, as much variety as I could think of that wasn't uh, animal related, that kept me full. and felt like I was getting enough calories. And that really what it, that's really what it boils down to is eating enough calories. Anyway, after two months, my cholesterol dropped from almost 300, was 298 down to 180. My blood pressure dropped from about 130 over 110 and now on a regular basis it's like about 100 over 70. And my cholesterol now after 20 years is about 130. And that's my total cholesterol, good and bad. And as you research this lifestyle you'll find that no one's ever reported a heart attack with a cholesterol under 150. And that's a cholesterol without drugs under 150. And the only way to do that is to get cholesterol out of your diet. And the only place that cholesterol comes from is from animals. Our body produces all the cholesterol we need from our liver. And ironically, when you take pills to lower your cholesterol instead of changing your diet, the pills only go to your liver and shut down your liver for producing cholesterol. It doesn't do anything about the bad cholesterol you're eating that continues to build up and cause problems. So the number one killer on the planet is heart disease. The number two killer is cancer. And the science is just building. Nutritionfacts.org, the China study, Dr. John McDougall, uh, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. You can get all kinds of scientific, scientifically backed information from any of those prestigious organizations telling you that animal protein feeds cancer. It's the most carcinogenic thing you can put in your body. And a good example is people who live in places like Japan who are big smokers but they're still mostly plant eaters. They have a rarity of lung cancer where people here in the United States who eat a meat-based diet and don't smoke still get lung cancer. So that's just one simple example, but there's a lot of science 
proving that animal protein is one of the biggest feeders of cancer. And people will try to, try to twist it to many different things, including sugars and the sun and the air and the water. And those all have a little bit of factor, but the main thing is what you put in your mouth three times a day. And that's animal products. Animal products feed cancer and clog your arteries, setting you up for the number one and number two killing diseases on the planet, and that's heart disease and cancer. Ironically, the number three killing thing on the planet is, well, at least in the United States, is doctors. And I'm not bashing doctors, but we're going to the doctor for all these ailments caused by what we're eating. And unfortunately, through, due to over-medication, uh, complicated surgeries because of what we've been doing to our body, the number three killer on the planet is uh, doctor-induced errors and prescription drugs. And we're seeing about it from Prince just recently. Prince is just one of many people in the news who have over-medicated themselves, like Michael Jackson and, and others have. So, what you put in your mouth is the most important thing you can do. And because of our desire for animal products, our unnatural desire for animal products, what we're putting in our mouth is causing another problem, you know, a secondary problem that's huge. And that's what's created an industry, an industry of raising animals for food that's literally killing our planet. And a film to watch is called Cowspiracy. I'm going to link all this information to my website at the end of this talk. So you can go and research all this yourself. But uh, the biggest killer to our planet is not cars and trains and boats and trains and the oil industry and the fracking industry and all the things that everybody wants to blame. It's the animal agriculture industry. I'm just going to say this one little simple fact before you go watch Cowspiracy. There's 7 billion human beings on planet Earth, but there's over 70 billion animals being raised for food. And those animals take on average 10 times more food than we take because they're big animals. And that food all needs water. And that food needs land to grow it on. So literally the majority of the land, the food and the water being used in our country and spreading to planet Earth, the rest of the planet is being fed to animals first. And then we're trying to get food from those animals secondary. And we get such a small percentage of meat and byproduct from those animals compared to what food is going in. So it's just it's the most uh, inept industry on the planet. And I hope the next president, which I doubt, wherever that might be, sees the insanity of that industry, even though they probably give them a lot of money or her a lot of money to keep uh, their product in front of everybody. It's the most inefficient industry that we could ever have created on planet Earth. And I hope it goes away soon. And needless to say, not only is those animals need to be fed, but they have to be killed before we eat them. And it's not like when we were back in the caveman days or growing up over the past 10,000 years where we needed a little bit of animal meat every now and then to keep us from starving to death when there was nothing else to eat, when there was no fruits or vegetables or plants being grown, with, especially in harsh environments. But animals don't need to die at the mass production that they're dying of today. Literally millions of animals die every second. Every second. You know, that's 70 billion animals. Divide it any way you want. That's how many animals are dying right now. So you can have a hamburger or a steak or a chicken sandwich or a fish filet or ice cream or yogurt. So all the things that we are accustomed to eating is being produced by an industry that's killing billions of animals every year. And I have to believe, now this is no science that I can prove on this one, but I have to believe all that killing, and subconsciously we all know what's happening because we know that that you know, chicken sandwich came from a chicken, and that steak came from a cow, and those, that bacon came from a pig. We know that that came from a living creature. So it's deep down, it's eating away on our subconscious. It's eating away on our soul. So with one single act, giving up animals and focusing your meals around plants. And when I say focus around plants, I mean get rid of the meat and put in more substantial type plants like a potato or beans or whole grains, something that's more filling, just like a piece of meat is filling in your belly. This will be more filling without the cholesterol, without the saturated fat, without all the water use, which all without all the land and 
food use that's going in to feed that animal and without killing an animal. So I have to believe that when we stop the slaughter of animals that's literally killing us from their grave and killing the planet, it has to help the violence that we're seeing in this world. We have a very violent society that's not getting any better and our population is growing. And I just feel one of the biggest tools we can do to lessen that brutality that we're doing amongst those animals, which is leaching out and becoming something that we're doing amongst humans. I really believe from my observations of people who have switched to a plant-only diet, it makes you a better person. It makes you a less violent person. It makes you a less aggressive person. Not in a bad way. If you're a football player or you need aggression, some of the biggest uh, athletes that are switching to a plant-based diet now are MMA fighters, and they're very aggressive people. And there's more and more professional football players that are switching to a plant-based diet. I don't want to get into the whole protein thing. When you go to my uh, website, you'll have lots of articles and research about protein. Just, just want to say really quickly, get over it. Protein comes from plants. Amino acids are what the makeup of protein are. They all originate in plants. Plants are where all life on earth come from, from the sun. So stop worrying about protein. Don't worry about calcium. Don't worry about omega-3s. All that comes from plants. Just eat a wide variety of fresh fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds and beans, centered around more you know, dense plants like potatoes, beans, and whole grains. Starch Solution from John McDougal is a great book to start with, and his book is on my website. But anyway, with one single act, I think we can just fix about everything, and that's not exaggerating. We can stop the major causes of disease. We can stop the major cause of global warming, if you want to believe in global warming, or just look at the logics of the major cause of water depletion, land de depletion, uh, deforestation, trees being cut down to make room for more cows and to, feed, to grow food to feed the cows. And all that food could be going to, to the uh, two billion people a year that are starving to death. Isn't it kind of ironic that we have two billion people on this planet that are obese, and we have two billion people that are starving to death. And the obese people are growing faster than the starving people. We could be feeding all that food that we're feeding to animals to humans that are starving. We could fix so many problems. So, after 35 years of personal training, I found that exercise is great. It'll help keep you strong, it'll help keep you athletic, help your posture, your core, rehab injuries. But the most important thing is what you put in your mouth. And all humans, no matter if you're here in the United States or you're in China or any other part of the planet, all humans are plant eaters. Our anatomies are all the same. We have small teeth, long, windy intestines, low acidic stomachs, low foot speed, no claws, no desire for blood. We don't do the killing. We let somebody else do the killing. We pay the other person to do the killing for us at the slaughterhouse. We're not a natural carnivore. We never will be. We never have been. We've always put whatever we put in our mouth just to keep us for surviving. But in this day and age of abundance, we have plenty of food and, and plenty of plant food. And that plant food can feed the planet three or four times the amount of people that we have now. We don't have to go run it off to Mars or someplace else to try to find a new planet to live on. We just need to take care of the one we have. So plants are the preferred fuel of human beings and they're something that every human being on planet Earth can do. Everyone can participate. It's not like we have no say in what's going on in the world. Every day at every meal, we can make a difference in our own health. And by stopping the demand of these products, these animal products, we can stop the destruction of our planet. And we can stop the deaths of these billions and billions of animals. And we can make a difference. So it takes a community effort, all of us together, to see this logic, see this reality, to see this way of fixing things that we have power to do. You know, a lot of things in this world we don't have anything to do. We watch what's going on and we get frustrated. But we have the power at every meal to change our destiny and to help change the planet's destiny and to help stop killing billions of animals every day. So, at the end of this video, which is right now, uh, go to my website, onesingleact.org, and start researching for yourself. 
I think you'll find that what I'm telling you is uh, pretty loud and clear out there. Three videos are right in front of my website that you should watch right off the bat are Forks Over Knives for Your Health, uh, Cowspiracy for the Planet's Health, and Earthlings to see what's going on behind the, the veil, you know, the dirty veil of factory farms. Go watch those films and then start researching from there. That's how I did it. You know, I didn't know what I was doing when I started. But once my eyes were opened, I, you know, my whole world changed. And I'm hoping the whole world does change to a plant-only way of eating. Call it vegan. Call it whatever you want. We need to get animals off the table. I thank you for listening. Research for yourself. I've enjoyed talking to you. There's a new world coming. Thanks. There's a new